Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, I'm going to try to help everyone pick their first HF radio. Are you a new ham? Did you just advance up to general? Are you looking for that first radio that does HF? Well, hopefully this video will help you. Now, I had all sorts of trouble trying to figure out what radios to actually post about in this and talk about. Um, the biggest problem was when I went to all my friends, man, I never heard so many friggin' opinions in my life on, oh, you know, this is the greatest radio that ever was. Now it's not, uh, you have to buy it on eBay because it's used. I heard a lot of that. Okay, so um, my opinion is that we should, for our first radio, buy a new radio. Okay, not a used one. Buy one that has a manufacturer's warranty still. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, that comes with support. There's a phone number that you can call if you're trying to do something with the radio typically. There's an email address that you can send to the manufacturer, and the manufacturer is compelled to send you an email back because it's new and it's under warranty. So my first criteria on this list was the radio had to be available from a reseller within the United States as a brand new warrantied radio. Speaking of warranty, it had to have a U.S. warranty depot or U.S. warranty facility. So if you did blow the radio up by accident or the radio died from a manufacturing defect, you could send it to a company in the United States to that manufacturer in the United States and get it fixed company didn't have to be based in the United States. Most of the radios that we purchase are based out of uh, uh, Japan and some out of China. But the Japanese firms uh, do have offices and facilities here in the United States uh, that do warranty repairs and can give you phone support as well. So um, that was the second piece of criteria. Third piece of criteria is at minimum, they had to do all the HF bands that uh, are currently available. Um, and even with that, uh, HF is typically considered 10 meters to 160 meters. Uh, it had to be able to do those bands. If it can do 6 meters, uh, 2 meters, um, you know, uh, 70 centimeters, that's great. That's a bonus. But these radios, at minimum, had to do HF. Um, also, these radios had to be under $1,500 brand new. That's right, under $1,500. Um, now, uh, that was kind of a big point of contention also with a lot of the guys that I talked to on choosing a radio um, because some of them felt that, you know what, you, if you can afford a $5,000 or a $6,000 radio, buy it now. Why waste your time and money on a, on a little cheese whiz, uh, you know, $1,000 radio? And, uh, you know, my feeling about that is a six or $7,000 radio is extremely complicated. Um, and it's your first radio. You got to be able to use it. And you probably want it as simple as possible to use. And you don't, you know, you may think you know what you're going to be doing on HF, but, you know, heck, you may get into HF and say, you know what, I really just want to do digital. That's a completely different radio than if, hey, I want to do contesting, or, hey, I want to do nothing but DX, or, uh, hey, I just want to show everybody how cool my, you know, $15,000 radio is whatever it is you get to decide that but you need some operating time before that happens and that's typically when the oh then just buy something used don't buy anything new you're gonna buy another radio anyway and you know what you probably are you're probably gonna buy another radio after six months or a year of this radio you know you might outgrow it you might not okay but my attitude is, if we can find you a radio for under fifteen hundred dollars that's brand new that has a warranty, and you're able to use that radio and actually make QSOs with it, we're miles ahead. Anyway, a um, couple other things. You realize that when you buy your radio, it isn't just the radio, right? There's all this other stuff. You've got tuners. You've got 
um, you know, coax, you've got meters, you've got power supplies, you've got, well, look at all the crap you got to buy, antennas, everything, right? You know, so, hey, when I say it's $1,500, I mean, you know, you're going to be spending another $150, $200 for a power supply. Uh, if you make your own antenna, you're going to invest maybe $50, $60 on wire and balance. Uh, if you buy a commercial antenna, you could be spending as much as, uh, you know, $1,500, depending on what your situation is. I don't recommend that. Uh, you know, I think you can have any great antenna for under, under $500. I mean, uh, you can have, uh, you know, a manufactured dipole for under $200. Uh, and you can build your own, for gosh sakes. Just, you know, measure the wire out and throw a uh, meter on it and see where you go. You're always going to need a, a tuner. A tuner's a couple hundred bucks. Your power supply's a couple hundred bucks. So remember, I mean, even with a budget antenna, with your coax and all that, you probably got six or seven hundred bucks tied up in toys, right? Beyond just the radio. So we got to make sure you understand that. But that shouldn't stop you from buying a radio. And let's start with the most expensive radio on our list. The Kenwood TS590SG. Look at this radio. Actually, this radio is amazing. I've talked to people. This is the um, grandchild of the TS590S, uh, which is just a phenomenal radio. Uh, you notice the majority of the controls are easy to access. Uh, it does have an old school display, no color display, right? It has... Uh, um, a standard LED crystal display, which works fine. It works great, uh, you know, but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and touch uh, screens and stuff like that. And this radio does come in at about thirteen hundred on the street on street price. Okay, so that's uh, thirteen hundred plus tax, shipping, all that good stuff. Um, this is an HF plus fifty megahertz, so it does six meters as well as uh, ten through. 160. Lots of really neat bonuses on this radio. All the buttons for all the controls that you don't even know that you want to use yet are on the front and they're easy to visualize what they're doing with the display it has. So it's a, it's a really neat radio. Um, now, that is one end of the spectrum though. That's the, that's the $1,300 end. Um, let's look at a radio that's a little cheaper by a lot. Okay, now, uh, mind you, this is the least expensive radio on my list. This is the IC718, and I was actually surprised this radio was still in production because it is a very simple radio, uh, has very simple controls, has the main toys on it, the main listening filters on it that you're probably going to learn how to use within the first couple, three months of operating this radio, okay? This radio only does HF, and it's the only one on our list that doesn't at least do six meters, too. This radio is very, very simple. I'm told that uh, it's a great radio if you're going to stick a radio off someplace in an EOC or something like that, that it's not going to get used much. And when it does get used, it's not going to be used by the same people. So they probably will have an easier time using this radio without reading a manual <clears throat> if they have previous HF experience. Okay. Now, to me, what that means in you know code is that the radio... Uh, doesn't do a lot, but it does a lot. It does what you need it to do and nothing more, okay? Um, another downside of the ICOMs, and we might as well get this away. I'm going to be showing you this and two additional ICOMs. Um, this one and one of those other ones has a really strange CAT interface. If you don't know what CAT is, it's a computer-aided um, uh, transmitting, okay, or computer-aided transceiver. And basically, it's a way to interface your computer with the radio. 
So if you're using logging software, which we show all the time, and you want your radio to talk directly to that logging software, you're going to have to invest some time in finding a usable dongle to connect to this radio. is isn't just plugging in a USB cable. It isn't just plugging in a serial uh, cable or a Nomultum cable into the back between your rig and the radio. It is much more complicated. Um, and uh, the actual controller that ICOM designed for the interface that they build into these radios is out of production. So I think they're giving up on the interface itself and going to a different interface. But, you know, their radio line still requires, in some cases, this interface. And the IC718 is one of those as well. Um, where the uh, Kenwood... Uh, is fairly easy to get set up for digital modes uh, using programs like FL Digi or WSJT65 uh, WSJTX for uh, FT8. It this radio, this ICOM is really kind of difficult to get set up. Okay, doesn't transition well between digital and phone. It I, again. $625 for this radio, though, okay? So choose your poison. I mean, um, for $625, you could buy two of these before you even got close to the price on the Kenwood, right? So, um, I mean, I looked at this, and I almost went out and bought one. I mean, because this thing's, this thing's amazing, right? It is cheap. It doesn't do a lot, but... You know, it is an icon. You know, then I started looking at the interfaces, and then I started to look at some other things. So I said, it probably isn't a practical radio for me. I would get really bored of it fast. Um, you know, but for a new ham, it's probably a viable choice. Anyway, let's look at the next up icon. This icon is HF plus VHF plus UHF. And it is basically the IC7100. Uh, and this little radio is really a neat little radio. But it's really designed to be an all-band mobile. It has a detachable control head. Uh, all the controls on it are basically touch screen. You know, you're over here touching the radio screen and making different selections. Most of the controls are a little harder to get to, um, you know. But... I am told by people that, uh, and remember, radio, choice of radios is a religion. So I know a lot of ICOM people that really love their ICOM radios that say, oh, yeah, but it's, it's very intuitive. Well, it probably is intuitive because they're used to dealing in ICOM. But, you know, if you learn it, it becomes intuitive to you as well. Uh, this radio, $900, not a bad radio. Um, has uh, reasonable interface qualities to it, you know. I believe, though, it still requires that funky control unit that you're going to have to pick up from uh, uh, eBay somewhere uh, in order to get cat control to work, which is kind of a disappointment. But, and again, it's not a color display radio, uh, but it is $900, and it does, it is a, what we would call a all band, all mode radio. But again, you know, the controls, the size of the control head, it's really more designed for mobile applications. So uh, buyer beware. But at $900, that's a pretty decent buy for an ICOM. I mean, their, their front ends for receive are famous. Um, the last ICOM I'm going to show you is the IC7300. This is a really neat radio. It basically has a touch screen. It's got uh, controls that you can just access through a USB cable. So no more crazy looking for that interface on eBay in order to do cat control. It has a built-in sound card. So you can do your digital, right, with the built-in sound device that's built into the radio itself. Um, I've got some friends that own this radio. This radio is amazing. It works great. It's uh, basically HF plus uh, six meters and great little radio. Now, this radio is $1,100, okay? 
But, you know, it's got all the little bells and whistles of, uh, you know, the more high-end icons. They're a little bit farther back. But the touch screen, I understand, again, becomes very intuitive uh, after a while. And let's face it, uh, almost all the radios you're going to purchase, you're going to be in a touch screen or some other things with them. Uh, even my big contest radio that I run, uh, which is more than what uh, what this uh, particular uh, uh, cost factor was, not by much, but you know, a few hundred dollars more. Um, that radio, basically, all the controls that I need are very easy to get to with just push buttons and a couple uh, touch screens, right? So again. This is a great radio. Everybody loves this radio. Um, and you know what? Uh, if it had VHF and UHF, it would be perfect. It doesn't. But that's all right. That's all right. This is an HF rig, right? And for $1,100, this is a pretty good price. Now, um, let's move to another manufacturer. Okay? I'm going to show you the FT891. The FT891 is an HF plus 6 meter radio. Um, the real problem that I have with this radio, this is a redesign of a radio called the FT857, which was a mobile all band. Almost all the controls on the front of this thing are the same. They moved them around a little bit, but the design of the radio is pretty much the same as it was with the VHF and UHF uh, built into it. And it has the same issue that the 857 had. It was designed to be a mobile radio. This is a very small, compact radio. Uh, and being designed to be a mobile radio, it tends to uh, be very hard to get to a lot of the controls. And so far you've heard me complain about getting to the controls on... Uh, <clears throat> all the ICOMs, right, with the exception of the 625, uh, or the, excuse me, the IC uh, 718 for $625. This by far is the hardest to get to controls on of all the radios that we've talked about, okay? Although it has all the controls that you probably would find in the uh, uh, IC 7300 and the IC 7100, uh, has more controls than the IC718, uh, but again, you know, they're really hard to get to because you got to go into menus and change stuff. And when you're operating and you want to put a filter on, like to knot somebody out, you want to make that as quick and easy as possible. It's not quick and easy on this radio. I don't believe that a notch filter is quick and easy on any of the radios there than the Kenwood and the uh, IC718 that I've seen. Um, now, uh, I don't know about the 7100 or the 7300. Uh, I would believe that the 7300 would only have a couple uh, uh, things you'd have to set up to make that really accessible, like a notch filter or uh, possibly a width adjustment. But, you know, is what it is. Um, again, this radio at $635, though, is a bargain. And... Uh, you know, uh, with that kind of a number, it's it's hard to complain about it. Um, my actual opinion of this radio is it is the perfect radio if you're going to build a go kit. Uh, the price is right. Everything's there for it. Uh, and uh, typically with go kits, you're going to have the need to have a separate a, uh, VHF UHF radio on one position and another VHF UHF or the HF radio is a separate rig in the same go kit. So, uh, you know, not having VHF UHF built into this isn't necessarily a bad thing. But that being said, let me move down to my favorite choice of the list. Um, that is the FT-991. This is a Yesu as well as the FT-891 was. Um, I own this radio. I like this radio a lot. It works really, really well. Uh, street price, 1110 Not a bad price radio. Uh, HF, VHF, UHF. It's an all-band, all-mode. Um, it has uh, 
all the bells and whistles, all the filters. It has the digital filtering front end. Uh, it's got a color touch screen, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, most of the high-end controls are easy to get to on that touch screen. Uh, there are buttons directly for them. You have four hot buttons you can set up just for that. Um, and I like this radio. Um, I liked it enough that it's in a go kit. Um, but, you know, it is 1100 bucks, right? And that's street price. And you know what? You can get these radios cheaper. I mean, I don't even typically try to pay street price. I'll put a price on it that I figure if it goes down below that price, I can't afford not to buy it, you know, and that's when I'll buy the radio. So if you got time, you can sit and wait on these. Um, there's a healthy used market on this radio too, but remember what I said, don't buy a used radio. Uh, no used market really on this yet. Uh, the FT-857 has a used market, but again, I'm going to tell you, for your first radio, do not buy a used radio. You'll have no warranty, you'll get the thing, and you'll plug it in, and you may not even know if it works right. Because you've got nothing to compare against, okay? You need to have that comparison, right? You know, the uh, ICOM 7300, there's tons of them out there, but they're, they don't come up for sale used very often. Um, I don't think uh, there's many of the IC7100s in the used market. My understanding is there's a few of these IC17s out there in the used market. Wait a minute, didn't I just say don't buy a used radio? I don't know why I'm talking about this. This thing's grandfather, the Kenwood TS590S. Uh, there's a few of them out in the used market. Right now, by the way, though, the used market is pretty much deteriorated because of the COVID thing. Because uh, everybody's using all their radios. They're not, they, you know, it, it, it's really, amateur radio has been a lifesaver during the COVID virus. So uh, I got to tell you, you're, you're not going to find a lot of really good used radios out there. Anyway, let's see. What else did I want to touch on? Well, all right. Let's kind of sum it up. Um, the radio that you want to buy for your first HF rig may not be any of these radios. I've given you a starting point. I've given you some things to look for, such as accessibilities of filters, such as notch. How do you put a notch filter on while you're talking to somebody? How long does it take? Do you have to push a button, turn a knob? Do you got to push six buttons and identify a knob for it? Um, what about uh, adjusting the uh, receive width? What about uh, adding attenuation if you've got a, you know, somebody that's just blowing the front end? How hard is it to get to those controls, right, to do that? That's the question, okay? That's just operational use and how easy it's going to be to operate. Um, the simpler the rate your first radio is, the better off you probably are, but... If you have some of those more um, seasoned filters and things in there, such as, you know, uh, uh, digital uh, noise processing, DSP, digital sound processing, built into the radio, um, eventually you're going to learn how to use that if you have it in the radio, and it's going to become an important part of your operating your radio. So, uh, you know, that's that's really the game and you got to know how to get in and out of those controls fairly quickly they have to be available for you to be able to do that and that's why we had that conversation okay but the real radio that you should get for the first time is the radio that all your friends have now why do i say that well they're the ones that can give you the best support and tell you how to do the things that you want to do Okay, um, now that's not to say that you shouldn't crack the manual open, go through the manual and try to figure out what you want to do with the radio before you start asking people. But um, when it comes right down to it, 
You know, uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of IC7300s out there. It's a very popular radio. You probably know some operators that have that. There's a bunch of FT991 and 991As out there. You probably, uh, you know, have an amateur radio operator in your little circle, uh, in your club or whatever, that has that radio that can help you with it. Um, you know, the Kenwood, the TS590S, and the SG, you know, uh, that is a big and popular radio. So all of these have basis and things that you could get information from other hams from as well. Okay? Look, at the end of the day, I don't endorse any of these radios personally. Okay? And uh, the radio that you buy, you may want to go out and spend, you know, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars on that first radio. And that is your right. That is your privilege. Uh, but my suggestion is for your first HF rig, for the first one, the one that you're going to do all the wrong things with and not tune the antenna properly and possibly blow finals out of and everything else. <clears throat> man, I'd, I'd go with one of these less expensive radios. Anyway, with that, I hope this helped. I know that uh, there are lots of people out there that probably don't agree with my choices. If you do, I'd love to hear a comment on, you know, uh, additional things that I should have mentioned about these radios. Um, if there's issues with these radios that you know about, uh, you know, because you've owned one, feel free to make those comments down there too. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that want to, uh, have, uh, new ham operators buy used radios. Why buy a new one? Why spend that kind of money? Uh, you know, just remember they need a whole support team. If you want somebody to buy a used radio, you've got to be that support team for them. You can't just arbitrarily say, go buy this radio used, and when they get it and it doesn't work, wash your hands, right? Anyway, with all that, this is Stu, AG6AG, and I just want to thank you so much for joining me. And do me a favor, will you? Um, if you like my videos, click on subscribe. You'll get notified when I put new ones out. And, um, again, questions or comments, please make them down in the comments uh, below. Uh, I know that I probably not mentioned radios that you guys probably would have really liked to hear about. But, hey, I really think that this is a good starting point. Anyway, with that, 73, everybody, and I hope to hear you on the air.